Well, they're all meant to be the same variety. Did I get that right? Yep. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, the variety. Right. That's wild. There is some is like, it? yeah, I, 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 I struggle. I yeah. look. I mean, I didn't struggle, but at the same time, like, I was Jesus, like, I've got yeah. nothing what to struggle over. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was pretty confident at the end that I came to a conclusion, but like. Yeah. All right, welcome back to Wine for the People. This is our blind tasting show where each week we try six wines where we try to identify what they are and we try to tell you guys how much we actually like them, how much we'd part with from our cold, hard earned cash and tell you how many bottles we'll actually buy for what particular price. And it's a kind of more real way of how much we actually care about the wines that we're trying. Uh, all the wines are kindly supplied to us by our dear friends at Different Drop and we are very, very excited to try the six wines that are before us and one is a rosé, five are red. So unsure, what, Lockie, what is, do we have a theme for this week? Guess the variety. We're playing Guess the Variety. There is six wines and there is a rosé. Cool, let's taste these wines. Cool, picking the variety. Uh, wine number one. So we've got what is decidedly a more red lineup today. So I'm not going to assume that this is skin contact wine. Today we are picking the variety. That's really concerning considering that uh, five of these look like really deep, dark red wines and one is absolutely not. Really simple, really clean, but that alcohol really sticks out for me. Um, I just don't like that, it's that cheap taste that kind of runs through it. It's got this like really, it's very metallic. But for me, I want something that's more like berries and luscious and uh, like, I don't know, when I'm drinking rosé, it's almost like I'm cheating and not drinking wine sometimes. This still feels, this, this is like closer to drinking a white wine and that's the rosé that I try and avoid, to be honest. Really, really wicked. Mm. Back palate, that's typically what I would tend to look for with rosé is actually, if I'm, I know this is gonna sound terrible because this is very much from a technical standpoint. If I'm judging something, I know it sounds horrible, but I'm, I'm typically looking for faults. Really shouldn't taste wine that way. It ruins it for most people, but. But yeah, it's this is not a winner for me. Um, I think if I'm gonna buy rosé, I want my rosé to be fucking yummy. Uh, and for me, this is not fucking yummy. I don't think it's gonna be expensive. No idea on bridal. Uh, I'm thinking that it's probably not Shiraz. Uh, like it doesn't have sort of like the, the density that Shiraz Rosé will typically have, so. And there's a tiny amount of astringency, that's kind of nice. What's really impressive actually is like how like low acid this is. I mean, like it's not low in acidity, but quite often these rosés are just so searing that they are actually quite austere. This isn't austere, this is really fun, fragrant, easy going. I would drop like 25 bucks a bottle for it and I would happily buy six. You've heard me say it before, Cannon Fodder Wine, it's not overly interesting, but like it's really, really good when people are just like, oh man, I really want a glass of wine and you don't want to give them some sort of like over philosophy or anything like that. It's great. Wine of two, we like faded rim, deep dark edges, little bit of a, a tawny edge here, but not too much. I mean, gorgeous wine, beautiful. The tannin and structure on this is, is fantastic. Yeah, really savory take on Grenache. Uh, stemmy, spicy, got like a nice ta suede tannin, probably from use of old oak. The the Brett sort of gives away is a bit of an old world nod. Um, and it does look exceptionally old world. Man, the finish is like really long, fantastic. Um, already kind of giving me hints at what potential varieties this is, but I don't want to give it away too early. Yeah, um, I don't know, yeah, that savory feel makes it, I might, I might go, I reckon this goes Southern Rhone here, which might be a compliment to the winemaker if it's not Southern Rhone, uh, but I think that Brett is really, really prominent, really, it's really killing any kind of element of freshness on the palate. It is just kind of like a, a dull drinking experience. Not my favorite either. Uh, like peppery and spicy so much as it is just sort of like grippy and almost like sour or bitter. 40 bucks a bottle on this and I would buy three. That bread's a little bit too much for me. I mean, I would enjoy this if I'm looking for like a, a rustic red from Europe. That's what that's that's the, the circumstance in which I would enjoy this. Yeah, so far I'm not, not enjoying this little run here. Did I wake up on the wrong side of the bed? I don't know, am I having a bad day? What's been going on? I don't know, maybe it's the weather. It's like, it's the middle of January and like I've walked into work and Laura's wearing a scarf. Maybe it's the weather that's giving me a bad vibe. 
All right, number three, looking almost identical to the last one, but the vibrancy of the color is way more apparent here. It is a lot more like beet cherry red, which is, you know, where I like this variety, which I think it is, I'm just confident it's Grenache. The one just has to let me buy it. This is smelling more like it. This smell like a musk stick, straight like, uh, oh no, what are they called these days? Like red rippers? Elevated acidity, real sort of fleshy mint palette, but it's got like an aloofness to it that, I mean, immediately my mind went straight to Grenache because of the smell. That smell is that primary fruited, almost like carbonic style. That's a ripper. Fleshy, juicy palette is just so there. Re really framed by these fantastic gentle tannins that really bring everything together. Still very savory. Sort of wine that I'd love to make like a jus out of to go with meat sort of thing. It's got that like herbaceous savory thing going on. Like refining it down here, I think we're in the space of Tempranillo Grenache Gamay. But welcome to the chat, Temp. Berried flavors as well. It's so vibrant on the palate as it is in the glass looking at it. Super cool. And then it's just littered with these kind of great dried herbs and elements of like, you know, spice and things like that. Just really adding this kind of complexity to it. I would happily throw about 35 bucks a bottle of it and I would actually buy 12. I think that's a a really cracker wine. I'm into these sort of primary fruited fun things uh, as much as I am uh, into Barolos, but this is kind of cool, fun, easy drinking. The um, viscosity is not the right word, but that's the, the it's giving viscosity. And the viscosity that's giving is much more water-like. Uh, it, it's weird. None of these wines like feel like you're drinking milk, but some of them feel more like you're drinking milk than others. So like, in the case of this wine, it does have more of a watery mouthfeel. And these are like all meant to be the same variety. These are all meant to be the same variety. That's wild. I kind of like had my inkling that the first three wines could easily be Syrah. That's not Syrah. And if it is, I'll eat my hat, even though I really like this hat. This is definitely leaning into the lighter, hands off, early picked, whole bunch everything. It has got that real great vibrancy. It's electric. It's got this thing. It's very, very fun to drink. I'm still sorry. I, I, I think I'm going to eliminate Tempranillo just because generally speaking, I think Tempranillo wouldn't have that sort of really light sort of uh, mouthfeel to it. Gamma and Grenache is where I'm at. Uh, I find this vexing and this is like something mas like it's, it's something masquerading as a Pinot. Um, you know, a wolf in sheep's clothing perhaps. Um, I would drop third, high 30s, like 38, and I'd buy um, probably six bottles of this. I think it's a really yummy wine. I think there's probably maybe some, I, I imagine this might be sealed under cork. And it really kind of tight, racy red berries, firm kind of almost green tannins, but in that nice little spot where it kind of gives you something to chew on and really makes you want to drink a little bit more. I think this will also open up as time goes on. <laughs> My favorite so far, and I'll pay, I don't know, I reckon it's gonna be cheap. 30 bucks, $30 a bottle for that one. Number five, back to the kind of darker shades, a little bit more in the Balaka area, still kind of looking relatively unfiltered, which is cool. It's got that lovely fresh fruit, bit of vanilla, a little bit clovey, but also not sort of like getting up your nose and sort of reinforcing the fact that it's an alcoholic beverage because sometimes that does happen when you're smelling wine. Like you just get that notice, like little notification pop up that's just like 13%. Fucking wow. That is a complete package right there. Tannin. It's like, it's like when you first have seen like a 4K television, you know, and you're like, oh wow, I didn't realize like the resolution could be that good. Everything's just so clear. The tannin is, it's almost like we've got like, a hundred times the pixels running along the, the front of my teeth. It is so fine, but full. It is present from bang to bang. And that kind of gives from bang, from bang to bang. Yeah, definitely richer, riper, darker, denser. Still, tannin is really in check, really gentle, frames around everything really nice. Not as like kind of aggressive as the previous one, but definitely a riper take. Still feels new world. I'm gonna go uh, Barossa. Cool. I wouldn't eat. The, I wouldn't have this with like uh, steak because steak would be like I would want Shiraz. But if I was having a little bit of jerky or something along those lines, maybe this is the wine for you. It's it's full from from left to right across the entire palette, which really means I'm like I'm talking in the realms of Cabernet, but none of these speak to me about Cabernet or potentially Sangiovese. It's kind of like now where I'm at. I'm, I'm between Syrah and Sangiovese. 
the tannin and structure on these is just divine. It's beautiful. I, I am a massive fan of that wine. I think that's pretty pricey. I'm gonna go to 80 bucks and I'm gonna buy 12. That's one for the sellers. It's one for drinking. It drinks brilliantly now and I know it's gonna age. It's just got everything. Ticks every box. Wine number six, final chance for me to get a dozen. It's been a while since I haven't bought a dozen on the show. Hopefully this one can come through with the goods. Lovely deep sort of violet, purple, red going on. Much denser, much richer, even richer than that kind of Barossa wine. But there is also more acidity and more freshness. The tannins are really kind of silty and fine grained. It is a very, very classy wine um, here. And that element of savoriness, Amazing again. Shit, it could be Malbec, actually. All of these could be Malbec. Either way, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be fascinated to know what these actually are because I'm, my, my sort of one hand was going, this is Syrah, but there's something about it. It's either gonna be, yeah, Malbec or um, uh, Sange. Southern French, Spanish style uh, thing. So this could be like a, a good appellation in the Southern Rhone, like a um, like a Vacaras or a um, Chateau Neuf de Pape. Wouldn't you know it? It is the one I'm gonna buy a dozen of. That's cool. I like it. Um, yeah, it's it's got all of the all the qualities that I was talking about, sort of missing from the first five wines. Just that really sort of starburst fruit flavour is in here, but it's not like a dumb fun. It's not the sort of wine that Noah and Brendan will taste and go like, "This is stupid." Henry's gonna like this one. It's more of just like. A, a meeting of worlds, the Venn diagram of like serious wine and then wines that Henry will like. This sits slap bang in the middle. And you know, to be honest, I think this is gonna be, you know, $85 or north. Like it's a very, very held and like iconic region, very unique, you know, the gullet stones and like very, very unique. And some of the wines fetch some ridiculous prices. Still, definitely worth a punt. And if you enjoy Richard Denser styles of Grenache, like Chateau Neuf, get amongst this. But for me, like it's an equal split between three and four. I love those both very, very much. Which, in hindsight, makes me think I need to reevaluate my opinion on Grenache because I only liked one of those six. But it could be Cab Stab, who knows? Let's see what ends up happening. Cracking example. Like, that's that's what full-bodied should be. That's what a full-bodied one should be. And it's like, so typical and perfect. Love it. Let's see what the guys think. Alrighty, six wines, a rosé and five reds. Gentlemen, how did you go? Well, they're all meant to be the same variety. Did I get that right? Yep. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Guess the variety. variety. That's wild. There is some is like, it? yeah, I, 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 I struggled. I yeah. look, I mean, I didn't struggle, but at the same time, like, I was like, I've got yeah. nothing to struggle over. You know? <laughs> <What> <laughs> I, was just, I was pretty confident at the end that I came to a conclusion, but like, yeah, yeah I, my thinking was that the rose didn't taste enough like a Shiraz, the rest of them didn't look like Shiraz, so then it was going somewhere else. And then I sort of just went through and woodered away. Like I don't, I, the first one was something and I was just like, oh, I don't think it's gonna be this after that and yeah. ended up somewhere. It was kind of like process of elimination. Yeah. See, this is really funny because you've got 100% for Grenache, 100% against Grenache. And then I think it's Grenache. 50-50. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, 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 st I, st I mean, that some are like light and fragrant. The yep. tannin on them is just wild. Like, tannin, tannin, delicious. Yeah, but it's like, it's there. Yeah. Like, Grenache? it's got a lot of tannin. Gentle All right, guns. we gotta we gotta have this like settled. What was the variety, Lockie? <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> this, this is, I've said this too many times now. I think I just need to change my tune with Mataro because I don't like Mataro. <laughs> and every time we encounter them, I'm like, this is the best Mataro I've ever there, had. These are all way better than all the Mataro's so I've ever had. I, I, there are some fucking delicious Mataro's in here. <laughs> Holy shit. There's some really good wines here. Fuck yeah, because that I, is amazing. That, like, that explains why there was a couple wines I really didn't like and then a couple I fucking loved. Yeah. Well, let's just get corrected. into it. Let's get into it. Yeah. Wine number yeah. one. Uh, did not like it at all. Nah, neither. Uh, look, I didn't, I, I see its use. I bought like six of them as cannon fodder to like put in front of Henry when he comes around. Yeah, uh, you know, I don't want that right yeah, now. Yeah, exactly, even Henry's like, I don't even want that shit. <laughs> like, it, I, I agree with you, it's cannon fodder in the sense that this reminds me of the rosé by the glass, not by the bottle at most pubs. Yeah, so, it's, like, fun yeah. it's function rosé. Yeah. Yes. Like it is like, it's yeah. just so like- it's good, simple up and it, down. Yeah, it's, it's fine, but it's like, the world of rosé is so vast. There yeah. are oceans of rosé and at very, very affordable prices. Mm -hmm. I would not pay my money on that. And I want, that. I want like dumb fruity yums in my rosé. It's, it's really lean. Yes. It's really, really lean. Yeah. It's like watery. Which is I, why if you put it on at the pub and then someone tries to complain about it, they're like, what's wrong with the wine? They'll say, Nothing. I don't, I don't know. There's, there's nothing to say about it. Which is the it's whole. Just 
boring. Yeah, so I, I thought 25 bucks because I thought I was trying to like play the game a bit. Um, yeah. That's probably what it's going to be. And six bottles. 21, uh, no, sorry, 20 bucks, one glass. It's it like, it, it the alcohol is really pronounced as well. I just thought the alcohol yeah. stuck to it. Yeah, too much. 25 for one bottle as well. How much? Idiots. What the fuck? No. Nope. This is some bandol nope. shit. Like, nah. <laughs> There's just no way you can make six dollars a bottle for that. Oh, it's... it's <laughs> is it Sweeney, one of your, is Franklin one of your River. Yeah, no, no, but it's Franklin River Bushfine Reverge Rose for sixty dollars. Look, you're paying a Franklin River tax. You're paying a WA tax. But I also think this is like this is no offense to Swinney, but it looks like a constructed product. It's yeah, like, it's a Provence is is demanding a price, but Provence isn't this. Provence, it, I mean, it looks it's like if it it's walks like a duck, you know, quacks like a duck. It may actually be a goose, you know. Like, <laughs> Number two. Uh, okay, this is, I mean, of all the wines, it probably is our old world. It's the one with bread. Yeah, it's bready. It's bready. I didn't mind it. It's I fine. Thought, I, yeah, it's I, fine. I would drink it for like a, it's a European red. Ah, oh, yeah. that's what that that's, is. That's, that's, ah, that's bread. You know, that's like, what yeah. that is. Look, yeah, like, I think it's just lacking any kind of freshness for me to kind of mm. really sink my teeth into it. Um, the bread, it's, it's savory, it's bready, it's rustic, it's bistro. It's got all those kind of characters to it. There's nothing like inherently wrong with it. Besides bread, if you're really like a bread hater. Um, but yeah, like they're gonna me, be people I'm at home that are just like, man, these guys really hate on this dude. That boy, <laughs> poor Brett, honestly. <laughs> boy. Uh, Forty bucks and three. Uh, Thirty-five bucks a glass Southern Rhone. Oh, glasses coming started, out for you. You started. I started. Yeah, I don't know. I felt like oh, literally wow. after I said, it's like, did I get off on the wrong side of bed today? Like, am I in a bad mood? I don't even know. I really have to look at myself in the mirror like pretty hard. Just like, what's wrong? With you? How much was it like? Hey! hey! Oh, of course it was. Well done. <laughs> Hell of a number. Hell of yeah. a number. <laughs> Brand new one, Balzac. Uh, Interesting. Matara from Franklin River. Uh, we're really, really hating on WA today, which is very rare for us because we generally love uh, WA and we love brand new wine. But we uh, like all of the branding on the WA bottles. Oh, fucking yeah, excellent That's shit. Like gorgeous. some gum nuts on fire. Is it like yeah, a mystery? See, if these guys released a, a rose, I'd pay 60 bucks for it. <laughs> I'd be um, I really like because this, like I said, a bit bready. But I mean, that's their, that's that's part of their mo. Um, yeah, and they're great wines. Look, this is just part and parcel of what you you know you, you buy brave new wine for. It's like yes, you pay thirty eight bucks, you pay the thirty eight dollar tax, which is it might be fucked up. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's good uh, point. And you know there that's is an, awesome. you know there is an element of like you know there's Brett. If you like Brett and you like savory wines, is, you're going to enjoy this, and you know you're not going to pay it through the nose for it. So mm. um, we always love brave new wine. They've got some delicious wines in their range, mm. and mm. Mm. always. From the pit of despair mm. to very elevated heights. Exceptionally. Yummy. Yeah. Yeah, we started picking up from here. This wasn't uh, that wasn't my favourite of the lineup, but it was mm. the first where I was just like, oh yeah. We're, we're drinking we're some on. stuff now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The first wine that made me kind of think that it could be Grenache. Yeah, it, was it, that, it that had that. Yeah, and this one really confirmed my feelings of Grenache because Same. I was like, rosé, like mm. fully juicy, ripe, mm. decadent, like gentle tannin, very like, you know, oh, it's awesome. Very good wine. I was on mm. uh, 35 bucks ambitiously. I was ho hoping it'll be 35 and 12. Easy 12 for yeah. me. I was 12 as well, 50 bucks. I was 40 for three. Uh, it still was just like a little bit too, I don't know, savory and almost like bitter for me in spots. Yeah, yeah again, delicious. What do we got? Nice. 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 Uh, giving it its Spanish name. Like Thank that. you. I like that. Yeah. That's awesome. So, Monastrel, Mataro, Mavedra. Monastrel, yeah, all the same variety, all different synonyms, all with different origins. Um, Bondi makes some of the most amazing wines as well. Yeah, yeah, called Vale, based. Called vale uh, but it didn't get the variety right. Uh, but it has that McLaren Vale feel, mm, feel like wow. ripeness, sandiness. Um, really cool, like mm. very, very yummy, juicy. Mm. Like if you want like a richer red, but still want some refreshment, this is perfect. It's also the sort of thing that if you took Bonda, like if you took that off there, you could sell that in a new art gallery for hundreds of thousands of yeah, dollars. 100%, <laughs> yeah. Just like yeah. blue square yeah. on the top, white underneath. In the MoMA. In the Pay me, baby. Smoke. Yeah. <laughs> it's cool. Another banger here for me as well. Yep. Love Struggled. this. No. Struggle. No, this is my least favorite. What? Your least favorite? Yeah. No, dude. Loved this. Yeah. Loved this. Yeah. I, I just masquerading as Pinot. Really? M like Matara masquerading as Pinot sounds good to me. Sounds like a bargain. To I, I, I just, I don't know. There was something funky about the nose. This sort of oxidative thing. The nose uh, smelled like a winery yeah, to me. It smelled like a fresh bag of corks mixed with mm. sort of like 
barrels and mm. cleaning products. Like it, it, it smells like a winery. Um, yeah, it smells a bit weird, but tasting it's like it's juicy, it's fun, it's like live. It's, I really love it. Man, well, obviously I don't have any sort of par standard for what Mataro is meant to taste mm. like. And so know. it's sort of like maybe Mataro's, maybe the machine's meant for chicken to taste like chicken, you know? <laughs> like maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe like that's meant to be Mataro. Yeah. I, I don't know. I just, I don't know. I kind of was, I was into these sort of like, you know, more structured examples. Yeah. So I only picked up six, which is not like slamming it. I wanted to pay 38 because I thought, yeah, it feels a bit nattier. Your yeah. least favorite of the lineup, you got six bottles of. Yep. Nice. Well, I got six. I like wine. My man. second favorite. <laughs> <laughs> I got twelve because it was arguably my favorite. Yeah, I just really loved that lighter take on it. Really, really cool. Um, I was having to pay forty bucks for it. Oh, maybe not that much. Yeah. <laughs> this is gonna be some some funky here. Too You're gonna hard. masquerade as <laughs> test the water. Nice. Yeah. So yeah, natty fine. in its feel, South African. It's made from grapes apparently. Um, but really bright, light, pretty, um, and they're definitely in his totally wheelhouse. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Amazing winemaker, amazing wines, and completely um, like revolutionary for South Africa on a world stage. Oh yeah, hundred well. percent. Like someone literally going against the grain. It's like, no, nah, I'm going to be really hands off, like lighter, um, like amazing job with Shev Shannon. Uh, and you were singing this song. It's called "Monkey Gone to Heaven," the Pixie song. And this is why you were singing this song, walking around. Very funny. I'm playing the man. <laughs> I'm playing the man. This next wine though. Yep. This is my wine liner. Oh, it was really good too. I, I prefer. Stunning. I for me, I. Really Really liked these two and this one kind of was just a little bit riper mm. um, and it's something that I didn't I like I was like if I was gonna drink these this style of wine I'd prefer either that or that than that like out of the three mm. that would be my uh, my bronze medal mm. um, but still great, great. wine yeah. excellent yeah. excellent wine uh, I wanted three for 32 I thought it was really good like Barossa style I had 12 for 80 I had three for 40. Uh, it didn't jump out at me. Like, again, we like different sorts of wines. Like, yeah. I, I, I was tasting these going like, guys are gonna like these more than me, I think. It's just got like the It's almost like we've intentionally that... struck that for audience enjoyment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do we got, Lockie? Oh, good Jeez. stuff. Great Love value. That. I think that's where you want it. Love that value play. That's awesome. 37. <laughs> Mataro! Uh, Lovely. Close, yeah. Tonic. Oh no, yeah. Brossa. Uh, Barossa Mataro, uh, tonic, great bottle shape. Uh, they've definitely, it'll do nothing <laughs> for your health, health but plenty for your soul. Uh, yeah, someone's read who. Um, that's fun. But yeah. oh, it's, that's, that's gold. I love that bottle, the Calvados bottle. Yeah, really, um, it was cool. really floats my boat. I prefer apple brandy, but you know, this is a pretty good second. <laughs> yeah. um, last wine. This is my favorite. This you, is my liked, close second. I really liked this wine. Like yeah. this, this feels very classy. Feels decidedly old world. Could be, you know, uh, I called it when in the uh, Barot, like calling it Grenache. I thought this was like Chateau Neuf. Mm. Like ripe, mm. dense, powerful, decadent. Um, again, I'm so into these two that it like kind of, I was like, I prefer those two over that, but th you got to game respect game. This is a very, very well crafted one. This had me actually double guessing everything. And as soon as I smelled this, I was like, this feels like old world Bordeaux. Like mm. really well ripe, perfectly ripe. Just yeah. lacks the, a lot of the flavor profile, but that sort of like yeah. poignant dark chocolate Violet doesn't ha doesn't have that like pencil shavings earth and like so sort of, like good. capsicum thing of Bordeaux, but definitely has everything else going for it. But this is your favorite. This is my favorite. Yeah, I on first tasting, I went through and it was just like this is sort of like the juiciest and the most fruit forward out of the mm. lot out of them, mm. which mm. surprises me hearing you talk about it now. But mm. uh, twelve of them for sixty. I wanted six for eighty-five. Uh, twelve for forty-five. Oh, so we're up there on price. All loved it. Whoa! Oh, like or some shit. Amazing. Damn, <laughs> that's, that's really amazing. impressive. That is such a wine. Well done. Oh, yeah, there you go. MGS. Barossa, MGS. Barossa, MGS. <laughs> how, do we, how do we improve Mataro? Put some other shit in it. <laughs> uh, oh, old vine Barossa Mataro, large French oak, no fining. I um, still stand on that comment. Whatever, whatever this is missing, which isn't a lot, this has. Superior varieties. Wine of the lineup. Is it? Arguments. I think it might be this. I think we all were super into that. We're into like that, that was but kind of us coalescing. You wanted three of it though. Yeah. I mean, look, no, no. We, we all were big spinners on this wine though. The chances you. That are is the, true. The best Mataro is not 100% Mataro. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, <laughs> I think that if we're talking about a Mataro, like I'm just never going to buy a bottle of Mataro out and about. Like it's just not. No, I never do either. Nah, never. Rarely. This no, has kind of changed my feeling of it. Yeah, um, you know. yeah, I'm happy to go that one of the lineup. Cool. Done. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm it. happy with that too. I think Bonda. It's Bonda. 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 Yeah, so done. I mean, there was a very, very tight podium, but good stuff. Yeah. And uh, Mataro, what do you guys think of Mataro? You mind changed? It certainly is here. Yeah, See you next here. week. Bye. Ciao, ciao. Have you noticed now that we're standing up that Brendan's shorter than us? <laughs> <laughs> I always knew that. Yeah. <laughs> I noticed more than you guys. Yeah. <laughs> Let's